Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Mono Green Festival. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. And yes, we have another Brothers War standard video for you guys today. This time, we are taking a look at Mono Green Festival. Uh, this is gonna be an interesting one because a lot of the deck are, it's basically cards that we've seen a lot of before. However, some of the tech pieces are actually the things that got kind of improved and, and stepped up throughout the, uh, the new set. And so I'm kind of curious to see how this goes because there's not like a flagship card necessarily from the Brothers War, aside from perhaps Rootwire Amalgam, which is kind of an interesting one. It's a five mana five five. You can prototype it out for one and a green. So it counts as either a five drop or a two drop, depending on how we need it, uh, which is nice because that, that flexibility in green in a deck like this, I think is really important. Uh, what it does though, is you can pay three and two green, sacrifice it, and you create an XX colorless golem artifact creature token, where X is three times, three times, root wire amalgam's power, and it gains haste until the end of the turn. You do that for five mana. Keeping in mind, we are a storm the festival deck, and so our goal is to get this out, hopefully use the five extra mana to uh, get a giant 15-15 out, and potentially just kind of win the game on the spot. It's kind of a nice way to be able to do that. Uh, we do have Titan of Industry in here. I uh, The original list I was looking at actually didn't run Titan of Industry. I think this is at an all-time high in importance because of the artifact and enchantment hate. Uh, we know artifacts are going to be big in this set. Why would we not include a Titan of Industry, right? Like, that seems important. Uh, another card that I think is really important here is actually Bushwhack. Uh, seems a little silly, but it's a one-mana sorcery. Uh, allows you to do one of two. It either allows you to search up a basic land card from your deck, put it into your hand, which is just nice for smoothing out your mana. We do have Azusa's Many Journeys, so we can play additional lands, things like that. So very good there. Or it allows you to fight a creature you don't control with one of your own, obviously. Uh, and so because we've got giant 15-15s, we've got four fours that we can get down early, uh, there's a lot of ways we can take advantage of that fight mechanic. Uh, now, for other big creatures, we do have Beseju Reaches Skyward, uh, which obviously flips into Branch of Beseju, which is just a massive creature depending on how many lands we have. We also do, of course, have the Renin 7. One card I did not include in this, which we played yesterday, was the Titania Meld Combo. Uh, now, I think you could easily throw that in here, but we're not necessarily throwing a lot of lands into the graveyard, and so I felt like that was maybe a push in the wrong direction. However, we do include Argoth, because on its own, Argoth is just a really good land, right? Like, we can tap four, create a little 2-2. We do mill a couple cards, sure, but we have flashback on the important one, which is that Storm the Festival. Uh, and so truthfully, this is just a really powerful card for the deck. Uh, we do also get Blast Zone, uh, which is great, and Mishra's Foundry, both now back in standard. Uh, Mishra's Foundry is a really interesting one, I think, in this deck. And then, of course, Blast Zone really helps us out against any of the mono red early game stuff. So pretty straightforward deck, right? But I am very curious in particular how the uh, Rootwire Amalgam actually pans out. I think it's going to be really fun. So guys, let's go ahead. Let's jump right in. Again, here on It Resolves, we like to have fun and test new decks. We're not playing perfectly, but we are going to have a blast. So let's jump into game one now. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. And yeah, this is probably a very easy keep. We do need a couple of extra lands here, of course, but assuming we get them, which we just did, uh, we actually can easily get to Jewel Thief, no problem. We can even ramp into that uh, amalgam just a little bit early. Um, I think what we're gonna do is go this route, uh, which will allow us, of course, to just play this extra land here. Uh, the hope is that we can draw a land off the top and then get this Beseju down, which will pull more lands from the deck, which will hopefully make this a lot easier. Uh, so we'll see. It looks like we did not get there this time, which is fine. Doesn't need to happen. Let's go ahead and throw out the Jewel Thief. This is just going to require a removal spell from them to be able to safely attack in. I will 100% trade this off if they attack. Uh, no doubt. Okay, sure. Uh perfectly reasonable. They're going to make a sack a creature, I assume. Um, very, very good on their part. Let's also keep in mind, though, uh, if we get a land, we can actually just drop a giant 5-5, and they might not have a great way to do anything about that. 
We also do just get the uh, the likeness of the seeker down here. All right, so uh, we can definitely just do that. Let's make sure that that's what we want to do because we could also just besage you, right? That's also a possibility. Um, I think we are just going to throw this out. Not 100% sure that this is the right call at all, uh, but I'm kind of curious. Technically, we would have ensured the uh, the Storm the Festival by playing the Beseju, but I kind of just want to try the Amalgam here. Uh, and so I feel like this is probably worth just exploring. Uh, so we're each going to discard a card. I think it's just, at this point, the Loam Speaker. Not overly concerned about that. Um, and then we'll see if they actually attack. Uh, it could be very interesting. Sure. So they're going to blow up the prototype. We will, like I said, I think... Yeah, I think we definitely block. Like, we don't want this thing sticking around. I will take that block. Uh, I think that's scarier, actually, than the Liliana in some ways. So, uh, all right, let's drop this. Blast Zone isn't terrible. Um, go ahead and pull a couple basic lands now, which is great. Um, yeah, kind of a do-nothing turn, unfortunately, uh, but I think that's okay. Uh, they're going to be able to make us each discard a card. We've got three, four, five, so we are about to get our sixth land down. I'm actually going to discard one of our forests, <coughs> especially given that we know we've got Beseju here. We can put one back on top of our uh, library if we'd like. So they're going to hit us for three. That's fine. Uh, and this is hopefully where the, the game starts to turn, right? Like, hopefully we can start to take over at this point they are going to hit us for quite a bit here but they are out of mana at that point so that's good and truthfully there is a world <clears throat> excuse me wow uh there is a world where this titan of industry is just going to take the win for the sake of um being able to spread damage out a little bit here uh but this actually works great so we are able to get this great and we do have another storm the festival here so and seven lands, so Topiary Stomper is allowed to attack, which is awesome. I think we just sack the War Chief because we just get a 4 4 back. Um, so this kind of just makes it difficult for them to do a ton. Um, yeah. So I do think we need to take Lily down if we can. Um, I think that's pretty important for us. Let's play land. Uh, let's attack first and then that way we can kind of make an informed decision whether storm the festival or titan is best um i think i'm just gonna go storm again uh, maybe this isn't correct i don't know but that's kind of the point of the deck so we're gonna go for it uh one thing i didn't mention is this auger of autumn play um Kind of an interesting one, but the idea being uh, if we've got that Coven ability active, we can start to play cards from the top of our deck. It's kind of a tricky thing, right? Like normally in a mono green deck, uh, card draw is almost always an issue. You just don't generally get a ton of card draw. And so naturally that's always gonna be a bit of a pain point for us to be able to play that auger, uh, which will then allow us the opportunity to play from the top of the deck, sort of eliminates the need for the card draw quite as much, uh, which is just super nice. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's send the attack in first uh, and we'll see what they do. It looks like they're gonna double block. That seems fine. Uh, I guess we just, I mean, it doesn't matter. I guess they're both just gonna die. Uh, worth noting, we do have that Mishra's Foundry available at some point as well, so we do have the opportunity to um, get some more going. I think I want to put a shield counter on the Titan. Uh, knowing that they have a lot of uh, kind of point and shoot removal, I think this is probably just the safest bet um, to be able to continuously attack in. Yeah, very cool. Um, not that bad for us, given we have Trample. Uh, it does suck that it has Death Touch, I suppose, but, like, that's the worst of it. Okay. Um. Yeah, so, let's, uh, let's attack in. They are just gonna take it. Excellent. 
Let's go ahead and drop the Wren. And there we go, guys. We got the win. That was beautiful. <laughs> uh, probably couldn't have drawn that up any better. We definitely struggled a little, uh, but against a Rakdos control style deck, I don't think that's unexpected. Uh, and we were able to get there. Uh, unfortunately, didn't really get to see the Amalgam do its thing. So hopefully we can do that in the next one. What's up guys, before we jump into the next game, I just wanna remind you that we send out altars every single month to participating Patreon members. Now, please don't feel pressured, of course, but if you are interested in supporting the channel and picking up some awesome altars every single month, you can check out all the details over on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash it resolves. This month's to honor some of the most impactful lands we have ever seen in Magic, we have got the Urza Legendary Land Cycle, including Sarah's Sanctum, Talarian Academy, Phyrexian Tower, and Gaia's Cradle. If you're interested in picking these up, they will be available through the month of November and will be sent to you at the end of the month. As always, guys, we really appreciate the support and thank you so much for watching the videos. I hope you all enjoy the gameplay. All right, guys, here we are for our second game. A uh, bit of an odd hand, right? So we don't have... On the back of Mistress Foundry, there is a world where we could potentially try and stick in the game. I think we send this back. Um, a, two, a five drop and a seven drop with just a bushwhack, I don't think that's enough to keep. I just don't. Uh, this I will keep. Um, and I actually think... Yeah, I think that's what we throw back. Might be un might be uh, incorrect there, um, but I feel like that's okay. Uh, we have the Azusa's mini journeys to get the extra land drop down, and then we can always play the amalgam on the two sides. So we don't we can prototype this out if we need to. Um, but basically, we're just hoping for a couple extra lands. I think here, uh, or just some rampers, right? Like a jewel thief would be great. Topiary stomper, phenomenal. Uh, plenty of really good options here, so we'll see. Uh, worth noting, Baseju is in the deck for us to be able to, and in fact, in this case, I'm going to go here, uh, to be able to deal with enchantments and things like that. So like hollowed hauntings, stuff that's like kind of scary on the enchantment artifact side. This helps us kind of deal with those things, which is great. Um, and uh, I, generally, we try to avoid playing it, I guess. But I think in this case, we'll end up having to kind of throw it out there. Um, but it still is a very, very good card. That flexibility of these uh, channel lands is just uh, astronomically good. Wow, they are going to soul transfer a Loam Speaker. Seems a little aggressive, uh, but you do your thing. Um, all right, so a bit unfortunate here, uh, but I think we'll just prototype this out. If soul transfer was the best removal option that they had, uh, I feel like... <laughs> They're gonna need to do it again here, and they may just not have one, and it looks like they don't, so that's good. Um, that was interesting. I'm just gonna play the Azusa out here. Um, I'm not gonna overthink this too much. And I guess we'll just play two of them. We gain six life off of these next turn, which is pretty reasonable. Um, do we attack in is the question. I think I will. Uh, the only downside that I can think of is if they've got a cut down or, which I don't think they have, or like a, um, um, Wandering Emperor next turn. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Okay. They're going to Reckoner's Bargain to draw further into the deck. Sure. That's fine by me. I'm, I'm perfectly happy to, to do that then. Uh, that's good. They're running green. Did we know that? No, we didn't. The Silex. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, probably should have attacked here with a Mishra's Foundry, because I don't think we want to play anything uh, into the Silex. So I think we are just going to hold off here. Kind of unfortunate, because we really are not doing great on lands. <laughs> uh, I think we just run 24 in the deck. I'm not 100% sure. It might be 22. Uh, 22 seems low, though. Okay. Yep. They're going to just sweep perfectly fine. Give me a land. Come on. Ugh. Really? I'm just going to go this route. <laughs> um, kind of annoying. Well, it doesn't matter, I guess. But yeah, that's fine. This is a bit risky when you only have four lands. So 
Maybe don't do this if you <laughs> are running this deck. Don't attack with a land when you've only got four and none in hand. Generally not a great idea. <laughs> Uh, for the sole purpose of if they do have like a cut down, it's not a whole lot we can do about it and we lose a land in the process, which sucks. So <laughs> I'm putting them on no removal because they haven't really done too much aside from the Silex to remove things. They did have soul transfer, but like, you know, I could use that vine wall right now. That'd be pretty cool. I can, I can has vine wall. Circuit Mender, really? Oh my god. Stop. Stop, Azusa. I don't need you right now. <laughs> All right, so we are just going to prototype some stuff out, get something going. We just need a land. Literally, that's all we need. One land can garnish us quite a number of other lands. <laughs> Thanks to the Renin 7, we should be okay there. Uh, if we want to, we can minus three, of course, on that, but... I'm kind of in the camp of just gaining a couple of extra lands, potentially. Yeah. This sucks. It is what it is, but like, one land, that's all we need. I mean, the good news is they're not like, we're at 21, right? <laughs> like, we're not dead anytime soon, but... Uh, so we do think they, we know they have Invoke Despairs. I think with that in mind, I am just going to plus up because that hopefully, hopefully, will guarantee us a Storm the Festival next turn, which I think is more impactful than, like, if they have Invoke Despair, we're going to lose the creature anyway. They may not have, like, a Soul Transfer or something, which is fine, but um, even worst case scenario, what they attack in and we just get to do it next turn. Seems fine. All right. Uh, yeah. I do really like the Mishra's Foundries as like, just for, as far as like having a man land in standard that literally any deck can run, Mishra's Foundry is a really good option. Uh, I think it's awesome. Um, it's nice because it's not overpowered. It's not like Hall of the Storm Giants or something, right? Where it's like really difficult to deal with and you just don't have a great option. Um, these are easy to deal with, but they do allow that flexibility and that inevitability that almost every deck needs. Uh, well, I'll say literally every deck needs. And so it's just kind of a nice little bonus uh, land. The The risk, right? Not the risk, but like the downside is that because it doesn't produce colored mana, if you are running like a three color deck, like their deck as an example is obviously Abzan, may not be the best option for them because they're trying to hit three different colors. We don't have that problem. So any mono color deck and probably even two color deck could easily, easily run some Mishra's Foundries just as a way of like poking through a couple extra points of damage if you needed to. Mono red is loving that card like for sure. Um, so there's a lot you can do there. Hey, look, all of our lands annoying uh that's fine though because we do have storm the festival next turn so theoretically <laughs> theoretically we can do something i'm really glad i plussed up there because now we can you know play our game um i'm assuming they've got removal or something for this yeah okay so they were gonna kill that or the creature uh which is fine so i guess technically it might have worked out better had we played the creature side but i think uh i think this is fine we've got storm the festival now so and plenty of lands such a dumb issue to have in a mono green deck <laughs> uh yeah and again just like a saw so like i mean our life total is not really a problem right now um obviously it could be a lot worse all right so let's definitely just storm the festival <laughs> We're not overthinking this. Um, I think it's Topiary Stomper and probably the Amalgam just because it's a bit of a must answer, right? Um, like if they don't kill this, we can just get a giant 15-15. <laughs> uh, and if they do answer it, we have Storm the Festival. So feeling relatively safe either way. Four, five, six, seven. So we can play eight, play this, play land, play storm. We basically empty our hand next turn, aside from probably one card. 
Um, and now we are kind of forcing them into either invoke despairing a lot or removing everything important. Um, but I think they're, and guys, this is like perfectly reasonable. I, I haven't seen a new card out of their deck, I suppose. Um, yeah, I haven't seen a new card out of their deck yet, but uh, just something to consider. Is this? No. Um, with, you know, with regards to any time a new set comes out, it's pretty normal for people to take some time to read the card before they play. And so while I do get very, like, not very frustrated, but while it's very annoying, I think we can, it's safe to say, it's very annoying when people take a long time to play and things like that. In, in a rotation scenario, not even a rotation, but just a new set scenario, like, people need to take time to read the cards. And so while this is, like, taking maybe a little longer than needed, I do suggest that, like, just be patient. It's, it's fine. It is what it is. We're all learning. We're all learning the new set. We're all having a good time with the new set. And to learn the new set, you have to read the cards and take that time, right? So just do it. It's fine. Um, all right, let's Azusa's Many Journeys. I don't think I sacrificed this yet. Uh, maybe that's wrong, I don't know, but. Uh, part of the reason I also want to play this, by the way, is because they have Invoke to Spare in the deck. I'm not super interested in giving them extra uh, card draw opportunities and just dealing damage to us. I'd rather sacrifice this. Um, I think also the reason I, I want to go this route is so we can, oh. <laughs> Okay, sure. That seems really excessive. I would have killed the Amalgam, I think. Uh, but hey, we get an extra land, which is great. <laughs> and we still get to play an extra land. That felt weird. That felt like a really odd play. Uh, yeah, we can only do this as a sorcery, so they technically kind of got us there. Um, wasn't really the goal for the turn anyway, so that's not really a problem. Uh, let's go there. Let's drop a 10, 10 Seems pretty good. Uh, and I will attack in. There's really not a big reason not to. I know they can draw a card off of this, but um, it still is going to get the damage dealer off the field if they do it. And they did, so that's great. Um, and now, like, we've got multiple things we can do, right? Uh, and here again, the auger, assuming we had mana available, we could get the amalgam down. And just think about it this way too, guys. Like, how much, like, how far behind were we? And now we've got six, ten lands. <laughs> About to be eleven. <laughs> uh, with a ren and seven on the field. I'm not saying we're going to win the game. I'm just saying, like, we're not doing too bad. Uh, and we can just, like, one-shot him for fifteen next turn. <laughs> kind of insane. Um... Yeah, you can get a circuit mender. That's fine. Not overly concerned about a circuit mender, I'm going to be honest. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, we'll plus up first, I suppose. Got one land. <laughs> okay. Uh, just just because I really want to. <laughs> just. We just. I. You know, I just. We need to. I, I want to hit him for 15. <laughs> let's uh let's uneven the score a little bit. Let's get him down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh yeah, that seems pretty good. I'm assuming they're gonna have like a invoke to spare. Oh, a path. Okay, sure. Obviously, nothing we can do about it. Good thing we have storm the festival. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't, <laughs> that's fine. Basically, the hope is what? We hit another Amalgam and just get to annihilate them soon. We could also just be attacking with Mishra's Foundries. But that's less fun. <laughs> yeah, I would love to get another land. Thank you. Uh, and basically, all we're doing right now is deck thinning like crazy. <laughs> Uh, let's get let's get a little 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 poke in there. Get them down to twelve. If they've got a removal spell, they can kill our land. We've got plenty more now. All right. Not the best storm the festival, if I'm honest. Like topiary stomper and a land, isn't exactly great. But do keep in mind, guys. Uh, each of these assembly workers can stack two extra damage, uh, which 
is not insignificant <laughs> uh, in the grand scheme of things. Oh, sick. Okay. Um, do we just tighten? We just tighten, right? And I think it doesn't really matter what we blow up. I actually think we blow up the Spirited Companion first. Uh, and then maybe Shield Counter. Knowing that they've got so much removal in the deck, like that seems like the safer bet, I think. Uh, they're probably going to block the other one regardless, right? So we kind of want to incentivize the block and just get rid of everything on the field if we can. Um, so let's get rid of the Spirited Companion. That's going to get rid of one thing. And then we'll shield counter up on uh, the Titan. Excellent. Um, we'll activate one of these bad boys. And now, again, keep in mind, we can plus this one up uh, after it's attacking. So we're going to attack. All right. Let's see how they decide to block. Excellent. Let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> make this more difficult for the opponent. Um, I think we just let it be there. I don't think we have to worry too much about it. It looks like they didn't know what that did. Uh, that's just my assumption. So now the world, the, like what we're trying to set up is a world where they have to have at least two ways to remove things because of the Titan of Industry with a shield counter on it, right? Like this isn't as easy for them to remove. Uh, Soul Transfer would do it, I believe, uh, but that's probably the only thing that will one shot the Titan. Um, and so at this point, it's more just like you either have it or you don't. Um, and even if they do, we do have a Storm of the Festival sitting in the back <laughs> and just more Mishra's Foundries, right? So like we do have ways to, to finish the game even if they remove everything on the field right now, <laughs> which I'd rather them not. But like, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right, let's go opponent. Uh, unfortunately, this will probably be our last game, just because this one has gone on quite uh, quite long. That's okay, um, but it is what it is. I mostly just say it is what it is a lot. Cheers to that. <laughs> All right, what you got going on here, opponent? Okay, they're going to Shigeki. That's cool. Path of Peril does not really do it. It gets rid of the Topiary Stomper. I don't think it gets rid of the Titan with the shield counter on it. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I've never... Normally, if you tighten up with, like, a shield counter on it, sort of just assume that you're going to win. <laughs> it's, not, it's not fair to say, but, like, you know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see. Go for it. Path of Peril me. Please, Path of Peril me. Keeping in mind, guys, we have eight damage available just in the lands, so. Because we can activate all of them. Um, also, I definitely thought I was going to implement a question of the day uh, at some point down the line, and I thought that would be a fun thing to do. Hopefully, I remembered to do that at the beginning of this video. Probably didn't. I will try to remember. If not, I'm going to try and think of a question of the day every time. Okay, they did get soul transfer. Good on the opponent. It's not going to matter, but like, good for you. That was awesome. Um, but I just think it'd be fun to throw a question of the day out there, right? Like, that'd be cool. All right, don't have a cut down is, is the takeaway. Uh, just going to... Just, just going <laughs> to... Uh, I guess for, for the sake of safety, let's go all in. And there we go. Technically an undefeated run, albeit we only get two games, I suppose. So, like, that's okay. Uh, that was a heck of a game, though. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up, guys. All right, guys. So, Mono Green Festival. How do we feel about it? Well, I will just say, uh, while we only got the Amalgam play in there one time, it felt really good <laughs> to get a 15-15 with haste on the field for five mana, essentially 10, I suppose. Uh, feels really good. Um, I like that a lot. I think um, 
I think in general, this deck is very, very solid still. Uh, I don't think that's news to anybody, to be honest. Like, I don't think this is anything all that exciting. However, uh, Storm the Festival is, I think, at an all-time high because we've got so many really good, like, prototype targets for it. Uh, and so some things that we could consider is building a completely different style deck where it's mostly artifact base and just some ramp in there uh, to get to a Storm the Festival and hopefully hit some really big things. I know there's some really big, like, 10 mana spells right now uh, that we got with the Brothers War. Uh, and so this feels like the safe version of the mono green storm the festival list, which I think is very, very good. I'm more curious now to take the next step and say, okay, well, what can we do to like truly break the card, if that makes sense, and truly like push it in a completely different direction. And so I'm curious. I don't know what that's going to look like. I have no idea yet, but I do anticipate at some point down the line playing a deck like that and probably building it myself because that's just going to be fun. So do stay tuned guys we will of course have more gameplay coming up for you guys over the week or the next week or so because of obviously the new set uh it's going to be an absolute blast i do encourage you again we have a, our giveaway going on right now make sure you enter that because uh i think next week is the announcement the 22nd i believe uh so do stay tuned for that but thank you guys so much i love you all have a fantastic day enjoy the new set i'll see you in the next one